You're listening to Jake Zape with Preaching the Sword of the Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Today's sermon will be based on the second reading, which comes from Paul's Epistle to the Galatians, chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. I'd like to focus your attention again on verses 6 through to 12. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. For I would have you know, brothers, that the gospel that was preached by me is not man's gospel. For I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be ever pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The introduction to Paul's letter to the Galatians is strikingly different to the opening of Paul's other letters. Twice, Paul interrupts the normal flow of the introduction to make comments about the gospel message. Firstly, he reminds us that Christ was raised from the dead. And secondly, he declares the basics of the gospel message in pure and simple terms. Jesus gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age. Then, when we get to verse 6, Paul charges the Galatians like a bull out the gate. After reminding them in simple terms of the gospel news, he is astonished that they are so quickly moving away from that simple gospel message that Christ gave himself up for our sins in order to deliver us. Since Paul has left Galatia, false teachers, false apostles have been teaching contrary to the gospel message which he had taught to them when he had come through there on his first missionary journey. Now it's time to set things straight, and to do it quickly and concisely and with authority. These people who have come after him have been throwing confusion among the new converts to the Christian faith. They were adding the demands of the law to the message of salvation by grace through faith. The new teachers are what we call Judaizers. They were of the opinion that Jesus was the Messiah who came to save the Jews. So then... The ceremonial laws of the Jewish faith, including that of circumcision, must be retained and followed with complete obedience. But the people of Galatia were Gentiles. These ceremonial laws had been given to the Jewish people as a sign to mark them as the chosen race of God from which the Messiah would come. These laws had not been given to the Gentiles. And at the Council of Jerusalem, which we read about in Acts 15, the church declared that the Gentiles were not bound to the Jewish laws. The Gentiles were not to be circumcised or to keep the kosher dietary requirements. The only things the Gentiles were to abstain from was idol worship, sexual morality, and the eating of blood. The Galatians weren't Jewish. They weren't circumcised. They had never followed nor probably even knew of anything of these Jewish laws. And having been taught by Paul... They should have known that they were not bound to these laws. But under the influence of these persuasive false teachers, they had begun to have doubts and to succumb to those false teachings. Paul had gone away to continue to spread the gospel message that Jesus Christ gave himself up to deliver us from this present age, and yet it seemed that the present age was continuing to have an influence over God's people. As Luther described it in his famous commentary on Galatians, these false apostles, adherents of Judaism and Pharisaism at that, were men of great prestige and authority. 
among the people they boasted that they belonged to the holy and elect race of the Jews. They were Israelites, seed of Abraham. The promises and the patriarchs belonged to them. And finally, they were ministers of Christ, pupils of the apostles, whom they had known personally and who had witnessed the miracles they had performed. They had even they may have even performed miracles themselves, for as Christ declares in Matthew seven twenty two that even the wicked perform miracles. When men with such authority come into any city or country, the people immediately develop great admiration for them, and they fool even those who are educated and quite steadfast in the faith. They subvert the Galatians by saying, Who is Paul anyway? After all, was he not the very last of those who were converted to Christ? But we are the pupils of the apostles, and we knew them intimately. We saw Christ perform miracles. We heard him preach. But this Paul is just a latecomer. He is our inferior. It is impossible that God should permit us to fall into error. Us, who are his chosen people, who are the ministers of Christ, and who have received the Holy Spirit. Besides, we are many, and this Paul is just one. He did not know the disciples, nor is he even seeing Christ. In fact, he even persecuted the church. Do you imagine that on account of Paul alone, God would permit so many churches to to be deceived? For us today... We live in an age where technology brings information in an instant. We can be quickly and easily influenced by anyone who appears to be scholarly or wise, or who speaks or writes with authority. When we see something written or we watch a clip, we take it as gospel. We are so easily influenced these days by the latest popular theologian or televangelist. We get led astray by false teachers because their books are the best sellers or because they have huge churches and heaps of money. We look at them. They seem powerful, wise, scholarly and successful. Yet these are only the outward signs of the world. Just like the Judaizers who came to Galatia, outwardly these people seem to be the greatest teachers of Christianity, but inwardly they are full of lies and deceit. And out of their mouths flow false teachings to destroy the gospel message. Self-help preachers that teach if you simply follow their 10 easy to follow steps, then you'll be a much better Christian. Or prosperity preachers that tell you that if you become a better Christian, then you'll be healthy, wealthy and wise. Our lives are now, whether we like it or not, driven by media, social media and pop culture. Would Paul and his gospel message even get a hearing today? As Luther said, Paul was a latecomer. He wasn't a witness to Jesus' earthly ministry. He wasn't a pupil of the apostles. If Paul were alive today, he would not be recognized as a great church leader. In his own day, he was shunned and rejected by Jews and by Gentiles, unbelievers, and in some case, even believers. In the Bible, we read about Paul coming into conflict with other believers. He argued with Barnabas. And in 1 Corinthians, we read, we hear that some Christians sided with Paul, while others sided with Peter, and others even with Apollos. In Acts, we hear that he fought with St. Peter over the ceremonial and dietary laws. And here, in the second chapter of Galatians, Paul recounts his conflicts with Simon Peter, the chief of the twelve apostles, with James, the very half-brother of our Lord Jesus, and with the circumcision party, those great believers who belonged to the Jewish race and had retained all the ceremonial laws. Compared to these great powerhouses, Paul was nothing. Not only was he a latecomer, but he had also been a persecutor of Christians, and he had ceased from keeping the ceremonial laws. If Paul were alive today, he'd be in conflict with every great megachurch preacher out there and every televangelist. Imagine how astonished Paul would be to find so many Christians deserting the gospel message and following after the false teachers of this world. And many of us probably know somebody who is or has been led astray. 
not only by the televangelists and maggot preachers, but those who have been led astray by false religions and the false teachers of this world. We too are astonished to see how many people in this world deny the gospel message. How many people reject their Lord and Saviour. These people are our friends, our colleagues, and even our families. What are we to do for such people? We do what Paul did. We preach the truth. We preach the gospel message that Jesus Christ gave himself up for our sins in order to free us from this present age. We need to become servants of Christ and not people pleasers. We are not to preach a different gospel, but to preach the, gospel, the one true gospel message of Jesus Christ crucified and risen again. For upon this gospel alone can we stand, even though Paul was so inferior in the eyes of mankind. He was confident in what he preached because he knew that what he preached was the true word of God. The gospel that Paul proclaimed was not the word of man, but the true words of God revealed to him through Jesus Christ. Paul was so confident in his gospel that he said, even if an angel from heaven were to appear and preach a different gospel, then that angel should be cursed. Paul stood upon the true gospel, and this meant that he could stand up against the Judaizers. He could stand up against Peter and James. He could even stand up against an angel from heaven. For even though Paul was inferior to these great teachers, the message that he taught was superior to theirs. That is because it was not his message, but the message of the one true superior, the almighty triune God. And we too have this same confidence. We can go out into the world and preach Christ to the people. Because even though we may be inferior, the word of God is superior. We don't need to be afraid that we aren't some great scholar. We don't need to be worried that we don't belong to some rich and famous megachurch. We don't need these things, for we have the word of God. We have the gospel message that Jesus Christ gave himself up for our sins, died and rose again. So that believing in him, we too will die to sin and rise again in newness of life. That we will be delivered from this present evil age and carried into the loving arms of our heavenly father. Where we will share in eternal life. Upon this message do we find comfort and confidence. Upon this message do we base our faith and receive our salvation. Upon these words of God can we stand. Through Christ and his gospel message, we can stand up against any false teacher. For even though we may seem inferior, through Christ we are superior. And may Christ himself, by the power of the Holy Spirit, renew and strengthen us as we live our lives in the truth of the gospel message. Amen.